20 house tests. You asked about 20 houses. Yeah, but how is that? Why is Presto not on the, the additive? Industry? We're not related. They're to on a different water system. Different, again, different water source. They, they, are, are they have their own wells. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, system. I'm trying to address Eric's point and then we'll, we'll get back to it. You brought up the 20 house test. Now, with regard to that test, the district was required to go out and test a sample group. And that particular sample group, uh, Stephen, can you help me with this? The sample group that was required by the CDPHE for testing. Uh, is for a tiered, it's a tiered, tiered group, process. Right? And it is based on the um, year mm -hmm. that the house is built. And the uh, purpose of the tiered uh, testing uh, group is to um, target the houses that have um, <coughs> lead added into the solder. And so that was like 1988 to 1992 uh, or somewhere in there. They actually had lead in solder. So when the plumber made up your pipes, there was lead as a component of that solder. That lead and the copper can leach out of the copper lines in your residence. That's the exposure that we're mitigating. Mm -hmm. But didn't they say that they, they didn't stop those things from going into the water? It just covered them? So it that just breaks them down. No, it doesn't break them down. It coats it. It coats the copper pipe. 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 There's got to be uh, some particles getting hold into on. the water. Hold on, hold on. One you know, time, let's clarify please. this because I think yeah. they, they yeah. are. This is a good point. I'm yeah. glad you asked yeah. the question. This is a really Thank good you. point. But the yeah. really, yeah, he needs to clarify is that. If, if the copper's got direct contact with water, the lead, then it can leach into the water. This is a barrier between lead and water. So to the extent it's there, it's protecting that direct exposure of lead. So it does not go into through your tap water. It does not it go through your. It coats it so it does not go into your water. And we verify that. It does through. go through. We, we, stay we verify that. It stays, it stays coated on the pipes. We verify that through additional testing mm -hmm. of lead and copper. And so they that lab. lead and copper are coming to the the residential pipe that's not the yes, source of the water. Yeah, correct. That's correct. Yeah. And then thank you for bringing that point. It was a great point. Yeah. The, the lead and copper that we really experience is in the individual homes, not in the district's distribution system. Mm -hmm. But the district is still responsible for that water as, until it comes out of your tap. You fill up a glass, we're responsible <laughs> for that water regardless of what you've plumbed your house with. So this is a measure to mitigate the effects of some of those metals that were used several years ago and, and it, to keep copper, mostly we have a problem with copper, getting into the water. But also lead is a concern. Can I just say that it's not the only solution? No, and we're going to get to that, Sandy, if you will. I, Okay. We'll get back. Okay. Can I just say really quickly again, because uh, JJ made a really good point, and I really want to emphasize it to everybody. We distribute water. How many miles of water? 65 miles. 65 miles of distribution system. We have five pressure systems, pr five different levels of pressure in this valley. It's an incredibly sophisticated water distribution system out in the middle of nowhere. We are very lucky to be here to be able to actually have this system available to us. The reality is, even though our distribution system goes to your property line, we are still responsible for the water quality that comes out of your tap. So however your house was built, and whoever built it, and however they built it, we are still responsible for the water quality that comes out of your tap. Okay? It's really important that you understand that. Really important. Let me make one more point uh, with regard to this 20 house test. That those 20 houses were chosen based on a tiered system, meaning they were we actively looked for those houses that had materials that were likely to expose people to uh, levels that were that were too high. That means you go after the worst, or in effect the weakest among us. You go after those in the community who are most likely to have that exposure. Those are the houses that the district is to include in its sample group. Well, you can extrapolate that from, let's say in a group of 20, if we've got 
let's say, uh, two houses of 20. doesn't sound like much. Why are you treating everybody for two houses? Sounds ridiculous. Well, here's the point. That is a sample group from which we can extrapolate that we've got a 10% exposure problem among the entire population. So it's disingenuous to say we've got two houses with a problem. We have 10% of our community, at least, that has this problem. There's all, the only way to treat it is at the point of introduction to the entire <coughs> system. You cannot selectively treat individual homes for this problem. It's not allowed by the health department. So we have to do it at the point, which is at the well. So that's why, that's the rationale, and, and that's why the testing is conducted. That's a very important point, because <coughs> if, you, if you don't have a valid sample pool, you can't make projections or Correct. assumptions. Okay, but here's the thing is that according to this this uh, uh, document yeah. I have here that the 20 uh, sites weren't actually done um, and 15 were actually done and of those three should be taken be cut off because one was the Fallen Tree Lift Station, Well 18, and a district's office. Those were not uh, private residences that they based this information from and jumped on into their plan. Well, and hold on. Another, another that's a great point, yeah. Karen, and I'm glad you made it. Thank okay. you. So here's the thing. If you've got a group of 20 and we're supposed to have the, the most vulnerable among us and three of them are invalid because they're <coughs> not vulnerable enough, mm -hmm. when we go back and find three more that are more vulnerable, that's only going to indicate that we have greater exposure, not less. So you're arguing the wrong side of the coin here. Well, what the, I'm arguing the is the procedures is, that you base your plan on. The, my point is... I, I assure is you the, we can find three the, more houses. I, I'm sure you pie. probably can, but the fact is you did it. Okay? So, and the plan was approved. So the, 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 the plan is Okay, and they, they the dropped the ball as well. So, okay, so can, we, can we come back yeah, to this? We'll, we'll 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 I have a whole list yeah, of violations by this yeah. district right here in this document. No, yeah. Yeah. we'll get to that too, and, and okay. I, I look forward to, to that conversation, but we'll, let's keep <laughs> yeah. it sequential, please. Yeah, the sequence is right here. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. While we still have these folks in the line, I wanted to just um, go back, and um, I don't quite remember the answer about the environmental data. Um, short or long term about this specific product and how it affects uh, the, the long term water system or the um, the environment in general. And are they there? Oh, are you guys still on the line? Yes, we're still here. This is Kevin. Um, okay. So environmental effects of orthopolyphosphate. Long term. Long term. Okay. The the product is certified to a maximum use level, which the standard caps at 10 milligrams per liter of phosphate, so of, of PO4. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's a mandate from the standard is that we can't publish. We, we, we need to assign maximum use levels for phosphates that do not uh, exceed that when we looked at as phosphate. And that number was set based on uh, ecological effects of, of, of phosphate. So that's, that's a cap that was set. Um, the, the standard is actually developed and maintained by a committee. Uh, it's called the Joint Committee of, on Drinking Water Treatment Chemicals, um, which e EPA is a primary member, and uh, Health Canada, which is the Drinking Water Regulatory Agency in Canada. There are also several state and provincial uh, drinking water agencies, as well as uh, some of the actual drinking water suppliers, some of the large cities or, or some of the privately held uh, uh, systems that run uh, municipal water supplies um, that, are, that are on this committee. So it's, it's not NSF. We, the employees of NSF, don't actually develop the standard, but this is, this is the standard that this uh, committee developed you know, way back uh, in, in 1988 that's maintained uh, each year to, to, to be up to, up to speed with current regulations. Uh, but that, that 10 milligram per liter as phosphate limit has been in place really since, since the beginning, and that, that was set for, for environmental reasons. And can I just respond really quickly because the, the environment issue is really important that you're bringing up. The standard that was set actually has more to do with the wastewater treatment side of, of component because what we found 
is that, and, and please verify this, I mean the standard that you're talking about really isn't about impacting human health. It's about impacting algae blooms in our wastewater treatment site of our facility. That's why that standard has been set. Yeah, yeah. And so long term, you would, I th if I understand, the long term, we're going to be using this particular since 1988, so the long term is since 1988 and what has happened since 1988 would be your answer. So, 88, 98, 22 years. In other words, there's no long term study. Well, I mean, that's what he said, since 1988. I like it. So it's, 